This video is part number two of how to install a 3D Touch or BL Touch bed leveling probe on your ANET A8. Come and join me. Hello, my name is Daniel. Welcome to the Crosslink channel. I'm here to help you being more successful with 3D printing. And if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing. In this video, I will cover the firmware configuration and sensor calibration for the 3D Touch or BL Touch probe on the ANIT A8. If you missed part one, which is about the hardware installation, please check it out here. As usual, please also check the description and comment section after watching for links to additional information, amendments to the content and parts used in this video. Looking back on part one, we wired and installed the 3D Touch probe on the ANET A8 using a custom cable adapter to make the installation more convenient and less disruptive. Now we are ready to configure the Marlin firmware and your slicer software to support the sensor and do the auto bed leveling every time we start a new print. Let's begin with what we have to change in the firmware configuration files. Open your configuration.h file and go to about line number 730 and uncomment the line define BL touch. Depending on whether you wired your 3D touch probe for the original ANIT A8 display or the ANIT A6 display as in my case, you will have to add one of the following lines. Define server 0 pin 27 for the original ANIT A8 display or define server 0 pin 29 for the ANIT A6 display. Then we will have to tell the firmware in line 537 to interpret the open and close state correctly and in fact it is inverted the original end stop switch. Don't forget to change this line to false because I did forget and when trying to home for the first time my nozzle crashed into the bed and I had to pull the plug. In line 781 and 782 we will configure the probe's offset from the printer's nozzle in millimeters. Because this probe is mounted left of the nozzle, the distance is considered to a negative value and it is also to the front of the nozzle, so this is also a negative value. Use a ruler to measure the distances and enter them in these two lines in millimeters. Then in line 816 we set the set's clearance deploy to 5 mm, which is enough room and gives us a little more speed in auto leveling. Don't go lower because then you won't have enough space for the sensor pin to be pushed out after a measurement. Now let's enable auto bed leveling in around line 980. I'm going with the bilinear mesh bed leveling option. This option tells the firmware to make 9 measurements of your printer's heat bed and then calculates a mesh to get the right nozzle distance at every point of the heat bed during the first layers of printing. Then I have an asserted 4 lines starting at line 1033 which define the minimum distance the printer needs to respect during the bed leveling not to crash in, into any part of the printer frame or to probe outside of the bed area. Normally these values can be automatically calculated but it turned out that when trying to use the calculated values I got a compiler error and had to define slightly larger values to put the probing area a bit further from the edges. Finally we need to enable set safe homing around line 1150 to make sure that when the printer tries to go to auto home it does not try to do this in the left front corner of the bed as with the old end stop switch but in the middle of the print bed where our new probe will be able to trigger correctly. By the way I have put links in the description where you can download the full configuration file that has all the mentioned changes already. This should work if you have the same sensor and holder applied to your ANIT A8 as I have. One version is for the original ANIT display and one for the new ANIT A6 display. Now, since we have made all the necessary changes, everything should be fine, right? Well, not so much, depending on what kind of features you enabled in your firmware configuration. In my case, I have enabled the new ANIT A6 display and the beeper together with auto bed leveling and the 3D touch. 
This makes the final firmware binary too big for the available run on the mainboard. So I had to go and flash the new firmware using an Arduino as a programmer device. So just as a hint, if you are getting a compiler error saying sketch too big, you are in the same situation and flashing using the normal USB cable is not an option anymore. Even with using the programmer, I still had to disable some minor features to make the firmware fit to the ROM. You can see this in the configuration files I provided in the description down below, if you compare them with the original ones. If you like to know more about how to flash your firmware using an Arduino, please watch my how-to video about it. After flashing the no firmware to your printer, you are finally ready to do the calibration of your probe. Let's get straight into it. First, let's preheat everything using the preheat PLA function to get everything warmed up and expand it how it would be in a real printing situation. Then let's first try to auto home the printer and see if that works fine. The printer should put the nozzle in the middle of the print bed and use the 3D touch to detect the end stop. Looks fine. Then we take our piece of paper and put it underneath the nozzle. Now go to the prepare menu, the move axis sub menu and then select move Z and the move 0.1 mm item. You should see a positive value, in my case that would be 5 mm. Now let's turn the knob left or push the according button on your init controller until we reach the zero point. Always check how much space is left between the nozzle and the print bed, but in our case when we reach zero there will be probably some space left to go. That means we will have to adjust the set offset value so we can go down further until we actually reach the bed with the nozzle tip. To adjust the set offset value, go back to the main menu, then open the control menu, then the motion menu and then select the probe set offset item. Dial in a negative value of around 3, so we have some space to play with and then push the knob to confirm the value. Now go back to the main menu and select the auto home item from the prepare menu. The printer will do the auto home again and we can try again lowering the nozzle until we reach the point where the nozzle grabs the paper just enough. Let's say that at 0.2 mm we feel a good resistance. We then would have to calculate our new set offset value by adding 0.2 to our minus 3, which gives us a new set offset of minus 2.8. Confirm this new offset and run through the homing and set lowering procedure until you have the desired amount of friction when you reach 0.0. .0. Finally, don't forget to save your new set offset to the EEPROM by selecting Store Settings from the Control menu. As a last step, you just need to insert one line of G-code to your slicer's preprint script with the G29 command. This command will trigger the bad leveling every time you start a new print. Don't forget that if you are printing old files that you already sliced, this command will be missing in those files. Now we are ready to do our first test print and see if our settings match also what we need for best first layer adhesion. I actually found that I want to lower the set offset even around 0.2 mm further to increase the pressure to the heat bed a bit more. This gave me the best results for adhesion on blue painter's tape. For another print surface this might not be needed and on glass this might be even a bit dangerous. So be careful and find your own sweet spot. That's it for today's video. If you liked it, please smash the like button, consider subscribing to my channel and ring the bell if you want to get notified every time I post a new video. Thanks for watching! Bye bye!